You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Good morning, good evening, and good day, wherever you are and whatever time it is, grateful to have your ear, as we like helping people who like to help themselves. So thanks again for joining us today. We're going to get started here. We're going to just dive right in. We're going to get right into it. Um, I didn't even say my normal spiel. You guys know who I am. You know who he is. We've been here for about 1,100 episodes now. That said... There is something to let you know about. The Drone U Mapping Bootcamp Interactive 3D Modeling Flight Mastery and Drone Operations class, they're all back on the schedule. Not in the way that you think though, which is why you've got to go check them out. We realize virtual classes are here to stay. And we're really grateful that we have the production team that we do to offer a multi-cam experience in a virtual setting because it allows us to show you a drone feed while we're showcasing the rules of acquisition. It allows us to show multi-camera, to show where the drone is and how I'm controlling the drone at that time. But in addition, it allows a more engaging and interactive interface for students. We wouldn't be doing this unless we really believed it worked. So if you want to join us for the class that we really became famous for, which is our uh, drone mapping boot camp, then you've got to join us here in August. We've got another one in September, another one in October, and so on. So make sure you join us. We're offering classes kind of spread out. So whether you want to master the operations of flight, so you never have to face the pain, resentment, and regret of crashing or failing in front of a client, then you are gonna wanna join us for that operations class. But if you're ready to learn how to build a virtual store or to help other businesses do virtual planning, logistics or navigation, or even team collaboration, well, then you're probably gonna wanna come to that 3D interactive modeling class as well. Now, here's the thing is that these classes are actually kind of in sequence now. So, you know, we're gonna start off slow, drone operations, flight mastery, into mapping bootcamp, and then go into uh, 3D interactive modeling to help you better understand how to apply the mapping into the modeling aspect. That said, I just wrote an article this morning talking about how drone pilots all over the country are really getting hired more and more, but for mapping, as mapping and modeling helps teams engage, interact, collaborate, and businesses can sequentially send teams out to a particular project area, remap it, and then communicate with the rest of the organization on how to move forward. Simply put, this is making business continuing to move. Join us as we will have the link below. Yes, I will be teaching it along with PJ and Matt. We're going to diversify here a little bit Sweet. Um, to ensure that the energy level stays up because I can't teach eight days straight, 12 hours each day. Otherwise, I get a little tired. <laughs> ah, come on, Paul. It's a, uh, it's a good example of the <laughs> FAA Part 107 question of the day, which is, if I were to work for eight hours a day for 12 days straight, am I suffering from acute or chronic fatigue? Mm, yes. Chronic is the answer. So thank you for that oh. part 107 <laughs> question of the day, Acute Rob. Acute or chronic. You I, know, it's I, probably I, both, right? <laughs> uh, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of it in the flawed uh, FAA testing uh, mindset strategy, you know? Fair not, enough. Not the, the practical real world, you know, how we deal we with We wouldn't life. want any practicality involved. <laughs> That's just weird. <laughs> but anyway, um, also quick announcement. For those of you Drone U members, for those of you who listen to the podcast and you you have a membership simply to support us and we know you exist and we really appreciate it. So mm. thank you very much for that. Uh, we're going to say thank you back and we're going to pay it forward. So if you are a, an existing DroneU member, then you've got to check out our radiometric thermography photogrammetry class, otherwise known as solar inspections, mm. as we're really excited to work and partner with Raptor Maps to help drone pilots provide, in my eyes, the most seamless deliverable possible. You know why I call it the most seamless, Rob? Why? Because it's the only deliverable that actually autonomously calculates the dollarized value of loss for the client. 
That's powerful. That is really powerful. It's That's also powerful. why it's probably the easiest class that we have to make money off of because, well. This is an interactive three modeling. 3D, oh, yeah. 3D couldn't, modeling. Couldn't agree more. That, uh. That thing should blow up if people will it is blowing get up. into that class. <laughs> it's not should. <laughs> well, okay. Don't forget, one <laughs> of our enough. biggest classes of all time was that interactive yeah, 3D it modeling. Was. But when I say that it should, what I mean is for you. <laughs> you, 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 as you. the listener. If it interests you, right? If I mean, I, I would think that it would. If you're a drone pilot and you're interested in, in building your drone business, then this is an area that, that you should jump into because, gosh, the opportunity. One of the things I love about the opportunity as well is that it's international because there are resorts and opportunities to do this kind of thing literally in every small town in the world. True. It's, so true. It's so cool. It is really, really cool. And uh, you can do it. You can absolutely do it. So I hope people will check it out. Don't forget the best investment, or should I say the investment that pays the greatest dividends is the investment in oneself's mm -hmm. knowledge and education. And that's why you should probably check out that link because we also combined all the courses and offered it at a special rate, but it's only for members. All right, Rob, well, let's play that funky question. <laughs> hey, Paul and Rob, Tom Powers again. Hey, had another question for you. I was wondering if each of you could tell me uh, or tell us kind of what your biggest failure in business was, what you learned from it, what you did to uh, cope with it, and what you did to move on and become more successful. Thanks again. Love what you guys are doing. Hmm. So, Tom, that's a great question. And I love the fact that the implication is that failure has occurred. Because as we all know, I think we all know this by now, if you're listening, whether it's your first episode or your 1100th episode, I think we all realize that if you're not failing and you are an entrepreneur or just in life in general, then you're probably not trying hard enough. And so, yes, there have been many, many, many failures. Paul was just asking me about something about just kind of learning from each other. And I was telling him, you know what? I prom one thing I can promise you is that anything that I have to share and that might possibly offer some value to you is going to come from the mistakes that I've made way more than the successes that I've had. So, so thus your failures have more value. Is that what you're saying? I believe they do. I believe they do. Yes. In terms of learning and growing. That said, before we get into the answer, I do want to say thank you, Tom, for sending in the question and guys and gals ask droneu.com for your questions. We would love to hear from you. This show doesn't exist without you. Seriously. I, I think you know that by now. We appreciate you so much. We appreciate the, the thousands of questions that have come in over the years, but keep them coming because uh, we need you and, and we look forward to doing this and look forward to getting your questions. And it's just really a, a treat to hear from you guys. So please send those in, ask at droneu.com. So do you want to start? First off, I want to start with a little attitude of gratitude as mm. it's so important for the success of ourselves and our businesses. And uh, Tom Powers asking this question is, uh, you know, Tom has played a very smart strategy. And outside of his smart strategy, I'm still grateful for him. But I can't help but sit here and huh. not say that you are brilliant, Tom. Um, and <laughs> no, really, like, you know, he. I mean, in the wake of COVID, he's gone out of his way to communicate in the community. He's gone out of his way to find points of value and to help other people. He's gone out of his way. You know, he's successful right now and he's trying to help other people be successful. And, you know, frankly, I think that that's really awesome. And when we talk about people that we're grateful for, Tom Powers is definitely one of those people. It's true. As uh, he is now a moderator, actually, in the Facebook group. So strategy aside, still grateful for I you, I assume you told him that, by the way, because I never did. Oh, no, no, no. This is why I like Tom. Tom is on it. He knew. He knew. He texted. He got the notification oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and he said, hey. Uh-huh. Got a boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, so. th one thing about Tom I've noticed is that he, and, I, and obviously um, this is a great quality, but he takes action, right? Yep, he sure he, does. He executes. And that's. And that's, oh, look, the bridge from your unhappy reality to your dreams is built on discipline, all right, the podcast is over. Thank you for coming. Goodbye. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, no, there's too many mistakes, too many failures to talk about. Too many. Uh, <laughs> but, it, but he said only the top. Uh, let's take it from John Lee Dumas, uh, the EO Fire podcast. I've been to his house, done some shows with him before. And I mean, his entire show is about people's failures. 
Yeah. And learning from them. So, I mean, we could probably sit here and do 1,100 episodes on our failures. Let's not. Uh, but don't forget it. In Japan, the greatest gift, right, a uh, cultural gold nugget is when you genuinely tell someone something that they can work on. Right here in America, if I get pissed at Rob, I'm like, Rob, you suck at standing up for what you believe in, right? In Japan, the person would be like, oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. That's uh, actually helpful. I'm going to I'm gonna think deeply on that for a minute. And um, I know that you're mad, but I could actually probably learn something from this and put myself further ahead. And that's... That's the route I'm taking, right? Mm. And you think about Japan, right? Uh, almost a crimeless society. And you have to start thinking to yourself, is it because of the value of life? Is it because of the lessons that they have learned? I mean, Japan is the epitome or the antithesis of American ideology, America, the land of the ego, the social media, the self-righteousness. And yet Japan is the exact opposite and doesn't have any of the problems that we have. Is that because they learned from poking the bear in World War II and cities blew up and they were like, wow, we thought we were more powerful than we ever yeah, were and we're not. I mean, like, I don't know. I ask these questions I because know. I don't know. Let's make something clear. I like living in America. I like being an American. <laughs> Could I be better? Could we be better? Sure. Could we learn from the Japanese culture? Absa freaking lutely, just like we can learn from our failures. And let me and let me give let me take a second to clarify what I'm saying about my point on America. The, America. the the biggest tragedy in a relationship is the inability to humble oneself down and work on the problem as a team for the betterment of the relationship, right? Most relationships fail because of an, uh, you know, obviously miscommunication or anger or fighting. And I really truly believe that people, and I've learned, I am this person, I would just say a little bit further evolved where you have to learn that in order for the relationship to be successful, you have to work on you and the other person has to work on them for the betterment of the whole. And that sacrifice is what really leads to the, you know, uh, to getting to a better place. And you take that analogy and you look at America and this division in the mass and people clearly making decisions on how they feel. I mean, we've been talking about that in sales for years and the writing is on the wall on just about every frame of a video that you watch on social media at this point. And the true tragedy in America is that we cannot put our differences aside to outsmart this thing. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. So I'm not trying to play left. I'm not trying to play right. Uh, they're, you know, the left and the right wing, same bird in my opinion. So, uh, frankly, uh, that I just wanted to clarify that. I know we kind of went down a rabbit hole here really quick, <laughs> but I wanted to make sure that people understood my perception um, because I think that if America came together, uh, the uh, reaction to all of this and the subsequent consequences would be very different. Hmm. For sure. Unity is good. I, I, I hope for that. Pray for so, that. So, you know what? Maybe we did actually talk about failure in America's failure uh, to come together. But let's be honest. We are have all had numerous numerous thousands and thousands of failures ourselves and so rob i'm curious what do you believe is your biggest failure i'm not sure i have the biggest failure i have numerous failures that when quantified collectively uh have astronomical value hmm. yeah i don't i don't know that i could say one biggest takes the cake failure because there are there are many and, and i think they all um, have importance in my uh, my learning curve, so to speak, as it relates to business. And it, gosh, what is what is something? What is which is still ongoing? Is what I'm trying to spit out. I think a couple of things that come to mind. Um, you've everybody's heard the adage of hire slow and fire fast. And I think what happens mm. more often is the antithesis of that, which is hire fast and fire slow. And that is something that I've repeated over the years and, and have so many different examples of how that went awry. There is a gentleman named Horace Schultz. I think it's Schultz, not Schultzy. But he is one of the founders. He was the CEO of the Ritz-Carlton. And he ran that company for years and years and years. And if there is uh, any of his 
talks, trainings, et cetera, because he's got a few of them out there that you can get your hands on. I would definitely listen to that. And that's one of the things that he talks a lot about is personnel and hiring. And he makes it very, very clear that the responsibility for that and for the failures in that regard are absolutely on the leader, the boss, the manager, the owner, whatever it is. And so I have definitely failed in that because I think what happens is we get caught up and and so it, 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 I guess it leads to not being a very good planner at times, right? Because when you plan and project and you think these things through instead of reacting to the tyranny of the urgent, then you do a better job of being prepared. And so I think of our friend Daniel and his business, and they've gotten very, very good at even in sort of challenging times, they've created a system. We talked a lot about systems. And so no matter the challenging time, they process people through their system and make sure they hire slow. And it's a very difficult discipline I have found when you have a need and the business doesn't stop and wait for you to hire that person. Let's say it's customer service and you've got somebody or a bunch of people that still need customer service. They're not going to say, okay, well, just get back to me when you hire the right person. <laughs> right? So the discipline that it takes to make sure you run candidates through the appropriate process and system that you hopefully have refined to ensure that you get the right person in a position is very challenging and and it's very challenging for me. And so that's been one of the biggest mistakes that I have made over and over and over. And I've learned a lot from it. And I feel like we, we've changed a lot in terms of drone you in that paradigm. And, and I think that we have made significant progress and not allowing that to happen, but you could take that same concept and apply it to relationships, be it um, business relationships, be it joint ventures, um, partnerships, those kinds of things. And, and think of that in the same way. So when you talk about how do you learn from your failures, well, you take the context of your failure and you blow it up and say, okay, well, it doesn't only apply in this context. Where else does what I learned from that apply? And this is an example. I think it would, it would apply in terms of partnerships and taking your time because we get thrown a lot of opportunity to partner with people Mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's always been, at at least in the earlier years, how do we not take advantage of this? This, But you've got to step back. And the reality is probably 1% of those that come in are actually worth taking advantage of, right? So that's actually been a huge learning curve for me. And, uh, and it continues to this day. I'm definitely not perfect in that regard even. Um, But yeah, that's one thing that comes to mind. And and sort of along those same lines, I'll just kind of tack this on. And that is, this one actually is hard to say out loud because I don't want it to be misconstrued, but I'm going to take that risk. (laughs) And that is, we have learned the hard way. And when I say me, I'm not necessarily talking about us, but it certainly applies to us. You can be honest. It's okay. It probably does. Well, no, but but I'm saying where the failures occurred weren't necessarily within our paradigm. That's what I mean by that. Maybe a little bit, not to the same degree as in previous businesses, but that is the idea of treating employees like family and friends. And I think that's a mistake that we have made previously because it just makes it so much more difficult. And that doesn't mean, again, that's why I say I don't want this to be misconstrued. I think it's a... Obviously, we treat every employee with respect. We appreciate them. We do everything that we can to help them succeed, um, not just in their role with our business, but in life and, and to help them propel their their experience and, and opportunities well beyond what they're doing for us. If that's their desire, we want to help them do that. But treating them like family, like, for example, one of my kids that leads to problems. And and I think most of you could just intuitively understand why I would say that. So those are a couple of the things as it relates to personal relationships in the business that I've learned a lot about. And personal relationships are so stinking important, obviously, duh, that those are the things that come to mind for me. But gosh, one of the things about this question that I actually find challenging is that we could call 10 business owners, bring them on, and they would all have very profound... Different answers. Different answers that would help you guys. So, uh, I don't know, maybe we should do that. It's funny, round table, as, right? as you started like going down the rabbit hole, I was sitting here and I was just like, hmm, hiring too fast and firing too slow. And hiring too fast, I mean, at that contract we were looking at just an hour ago, 
that just cost me and you 50000 each. <laughs> so, <laughs> oops. <laughs> I mean, I hate, yeah. to, uh, I hate to humble, uh, be humble here. Humble but, pie uh, don't taste good. Uh, no. <laughs> um, it's very bitter. Yeah, I mean, like, and I sit here and talk all the time about our negotiating skills and, you know, how to go about things. And uh, if you act too fast, it's, uh, it, it, it's difficult um, in any regard. Uh, to to make the right decision. So with that said, though, I think I kind of figured out maybe what my biggest issue is, my biggest failure. Gosh, I, it's it's so difficult to even say the biggest because there's... Yeah, it's impossible yeah, for me. Unless you're Trump. I've got the biggest of all the biggest failures and it's the biggest failure. You could not have a bigger failure than me. But it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. Whether oh. yeah, whether you like him or not, who cares? It's fun to make fun of it's, whoever's president. That is not the point. Yeah. That's right. So anyway, long story short is, I think my biggest failure. It you know you said that as a small business owner, you need to learn to say no, right? Because mm. you get presented with opportunities, and sometimes as you you get kind of fame and and people write about your business, other businesses will just come to you just to like, you know, catch the coattails, literally, and. I would say that my one of my biggest failures is my lack of focus. Mm. And I actually would say that, you know, as we were talking about John Lee Dumas from the EO Fire podcast, I actually think that that's probably the biggest takeaway that I got out of going to his house in Puerto Rico, mm. which, you know, a, we started a live stream together. And uh, I ha as we did the live stream through the drone, it was the biggest live stream that he had done up until that time. And I don't, I don't know about until now. I don't follow that. But I remember in the first three minutes, he complimented drone you in our ability to focus on a nuanced thing like drone education. And he mm. was like, he was like, they are the epitome of follow one course until success. Mm. You need to be like Paul, like Paul was incessant on coming to meet me and I've never met Paul, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Well, I'm just grateful my wife offended him after that. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, dude. <laughs> anyway, uh, long story short is uh, I think my biggest failure is the lack of focus and is, a, and is a lack of telling people no. I think I've gotten very good at it now. Um, but the next evolution of that is, you know, they say a true genius is making a point without offending someone. I feel like that's the level I'm trying to ascertain right now, which is mm. I, I have no issue. Dave Schwamm, John Schwamm, you guys know. I'm going to play the video one day. Um, I think but, everybody knows. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but I think everybody knows that I really don't have an issue if I genuinely and confidently believe something that I will tell someone to their face, GFY. And I don't really care how you respond because I'm not saying things to make you happy. I'm here to, to get a job done and build relationships. So, you know, it's about uh, success on the personal front as well as uh, the business front. And that's what I think a lot of people don't understand about me. Um, that said, I also believe in radical candor. Mm -hmm. I think people need more of that. I think people need to be told, uh, get off the high horse. You're not that good. And you really need to humble down in order to better yourself. I mean, I feel like our, the listeners of this show over the years, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, seriously, comment, let us know. But have you seen me? Uh, make a, a direction in, in humility one way or the other? Have you seen uh, what what do you think effect that that has had either way? I'm, I'm super curious to know. But I will say I feel like I have realized how important it is to be humble, to make objective decisions, to speak to people in radical candor. Because if you do offend someone, you have to be able to be fast, be quick, ask a very calibrated question without, you know, seemingly mean. And then when you put the issue back on them, those people actually start to really you know, critically think about what you just said. And in a constant society where we listen to conversations in order to have a response and not really, you know, uh, analyze and contemplate, I think radical candor is something that we really all need, which is, I think, why I was so crushed uh, by that, uh, by Ken's video on, you know, on the whole thing that happened. I was like, well, hold on a minute. Like, 
You know, I understand what you're saying about well, being nice to people. He was radically candorous. Uh, is that is that a word? While he was radically candorous, he was also technically false. Um, but I also hear what he was saying about, you know, like, let's build people up. Let's inspire him. And he's not wrong. And his strategy was very yeah. intelligent. So that sure. said, I think that while we need to not uh, beat a puppy that's in the corner. We also need to say, now, come on, get out of the funk and let's go have fun, right? And I see radical candor is kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so honestly, like, I know a lot of people really don't like um, staunch, strict parents, and I understand why. And obviously, I'm not saying that staunch, strict parents are the answer. I'm not saying that. I actually think it's a balance between staunch and strict and allowing your kids to be independent to make their own decisions. I'm not a parent. Don't judge me. Okay. So that said, I think it's important, though, that uh, people understand that if someone you know, is, has radical candor and if they're being honest, that it's actually a good thing. Like, I think it's a really good thing. Ugh, there's so much to unpack. Oh, for sure. And, and we're not going to do it on this show. <laughs> I have so many thoughts about that whole idea because I don't disagree with you. There's just so much depth to go into as it relates to that subject. Well, help me understand where your, your train of thought is going because I'm intellectually curious and I'm wondering what's going on. I mean, like, we don't have to go super deep, but no, I... No, how do I just say it succinctly in, in response? I think that the more, the deeper that the relationship you have the more of a right you have to be radically candor, the more you're going to be listened to in the first place. I think that when it's done um, in, a, in a condescending way, I mean, it, the way it's, we talk a lot about the how. So when we talk about radical candor, that really hits me deep is, okay, how am I, am I doing it to really build them up? Which I talk to my kids all, all the time about. I hate when they tear each other down. You can accomplish the same damn thing that you're trying to accomplish by tearing them down, by building them up, but you can do it in a radically candorous way. I don't know if that's a word. Well, I think <laughs> that you have to ask yourself, what is the intention? I love calling people out on their intentions. I'm like, why did you say that? What's your intention? Is your intention to better our relationship or is your point to make yourself feel better about the argument that you just made because you want to cause a change in me that you cannot control and you think that berating me is going to get me there? How do you expect me to actually think you're credible? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. like, I'm sorry, but I really like. But the this... other thing is you got to be able to take it the same way you give it. Mm. And I think most of the people I, w I don't I, I feel agree. comfortable saying that most of the people in life that are willing to get in your face and show that radical candor towards you because they got something you need to know. They are not as willing to accept you doing the same to them. Are you saying that maybe that there's a way to better understand the credibility of someone's radical candor based off of their honesty or, um, man, I kind of lost my train of thought. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's all wrapped up in it. That's why I said it's so deep. There's a lot to unpack there. It is. And it, it starts with, and I, don't, <laughs> I think we're way past our business failures, but that's okay. It's fun to talk about. Hopefully, if you're not interested, you stopped listening. Let's hold on. Let's rein it back. Okay. Do you agree that success is self-awareness and incessant hard work? Yes, I think that's critical. So would you agree that this conversation that we're having about our failures in business matter just as much in our personal life and thus exacerbate into our business life? So yeah. then I think that what you're saying is 100% relevant. No, I, I'm not saying it's not relevant, I, uh, but I appreciate you kind of bringing it back like you did because, yeah, that's right. And there's definite value in all of this, I think, whether it's perceived or not, I, I feel the value in, in my own life. But, yeah, I'm just saying that I, I don't disagree with you as it relates to radical candor. I think that what I'm saying is that the way that it manifests for you is something you really need to think about. Don't just – and I'm not saying people would necessarily do this consciously – but I don't want people to say, you know what? He's right. I'm going to be tougher and I'm just going to start telling people like it is, right? It's not no. what it's about. Yeah. It's not what it's about. And speaking in absolutes or going the extreme in one direction or the other, trust me, trust me, trust me, middle of the road, balance. It's not always... Understanding. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, if you don't mind me, I, why did I change my voice when I said that? <laughs> it was like the Southern <laughs> Baptist, like, reverend, like... Yeah. 
All right, people, welcome. We're going to have a good day. Can I get a hallelujah? <laughs> Let's go to church. <laughs> so, no, but in all seriousness. Okay, I'll, I'll play, I'll play uh, engaging Southern Baptist choir. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, man, I'm so sorry. But no, in all seriousness, there's a lot of practical lessons. Uh, yeah, that's an, hallelujah. Un- that's an understatement. <laughs> all right, so here it is. Quick to listen. Hey, man. Slow to speak. Hey, man. Slow to anger. Hallelujah. That's it. I really like doing Understand that Understand first. Yeah, you're a little too good at that. I'm uh, worried. I'm not sure what that's about. That's what happens when you grow up in Virginia. Oh, anywho, anywho. <laughs> On that note. On that note, I agree with you, but I do like to have fun with it. And I hope, oh, yeah, you, yeah. I hope you don't think it's oh, blasphemous. Gosh, no, so. no, no. Well, that's not my decision to uh, determine oh, whether it's blasphemous oh, geez, or not. downhill. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, back to our biggest uh, failures. I just want to say to kind of recap my biggest failure and lack of focus. I mean, I think a lot of you see uh, some of the battles that I uh, have to go through every day in the way that, you know, I I speak on the show. I think that you can understand that I have an issue focusing, uh, that I have an issue uh, sticking to one subject, but I have learned uh, how to really kind of feed that. Mm -hmm. Now, I would say the biggest issue that I see in small business owners is number one, um, a, a lack of focus as well and not having like a dedicated plan and going into the new business with a two, three year plan to say, this is what I'm going to offer. This is what I'm going to focus on. This is why I'm doing it. This is the problem that this solves for who it solves. And I'm going to make the best damn thing of exactly that and do nothing else. And then when it starts to build and build and build, well, then maybe I'll partner with people. Maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll do that. So um, I would just say that small business owners focus, make a very dedicated plan. The best lesson that I learned from the entrepreneurial challenge at the University of New Mexico was that the best entrepreneur is similar to the ideology of the best lawyers and dad because you made super lawyers the 1% of the 1%. I had to say that for him. Um, because it, it is super impressive. I would want people to know as well. <laughs> okay. Love you. Love Carry you, on. Carry Love on. you dad. Um, when I realized that the ideology is almost identical, it shook me to my core because it, I felt like my dad had prepared me for this world. And what is that ideology? Well, the business school teaches you that you have to make a three to four, five year plan, use the SBA stuff. But the secret hint that I got from Stacy Sacco, uh, who was one of the best instructors I've ever had, and he let me instruct his class numerous times. I love doing it. Long story short is he told me, he said, Paul, you know how you win this thing? You figure out every damn way the thing fails, how you're going to stop it and why it's not going to matter to you and your competitive advantage is different. So he goes, I literally want you to go back to your house and have your friends berate you. How Mm. is this going to fail in every way possible? Because when you can look back at them and say, good question, think about this, 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 and this. He's like, people will seriously look at you and be like, wow, he's prepared. He's thought it through. He actually might have a chance at being successful. And I will never forget the first hard question that I got when I presented that business at the entrepreneurial challenge. And he said, well, how do you, uh, you know, how do you expect to overcome the large affinity for uh, taxi cabs and whatnot? And this was before Uber. And I said, you know what, sir, that is a fantastic question. And you know what? I would chalk it down to how you feel. I said, I just took a taxi cab ride just a few days ago. And I actually had, I'd gone to the airport in a shitty taxi. And long story short is the guy hit the curb twice. And I mean, this really happened. And it was really right before the entrepreneurial challenge. Hmm. And I said, do you know how that made me feel? It made me feel uncomfortable. It made me feel insecure. Unsafe. And I don't want to use that service ever again, unless I absolutely have to. And I said, sir, would you agree that if you felt uncomfortable that you would be seeking an alternative? And the guy was like, I'm super impressed that you've even thought this through. Hmm. And he's like, no more questions. And he let the next person go, the next judge. And I was flabbergasted because everything that Sacco told me and I prepared for was right. So like a lawyer, you must know objectively 
each end of the case. You must be willing to research and prepare more than everyone else. If you do, you will win. That's the secret. It's not hard. It really is not hard. And, you know, we, we, yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. You look at that meeting that we just had the other day, the last minute meeting, Wednesday morning. And one of the guys said, you know, very specifically, uh, you know, talking about focus, talking about being prepared, understanding both sides of the issue. Um, you know, it makes, really makes me wonder if we weren't prepared for that meeting, if it would have gone as well as it had. Because mm. even though it was last minute, I, I seriously don't know if it would have gone as well as it had. And that wasn't the point I wanted to get to. I kind of retraced the point I wanted to get to. But that said, if you plan and you prepare and you think about how things are going to fail and you take it slow, you should be okay. The last thing I would say and some psychologists may think I'm crazy, and that's okay. <laughs> Try to eliminate the emotion from your business. I know that's really hard, almost, almost impossible, but it is doable because that's going to help you make the right decisions. Hmm. So, yeah. Because if you focus too, too much, you know, on how you feel, well, we know where that goes. Yeah. True. Very true. Yes. I feel like Yoda. Well, fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. And then regret and then resentment and then failure. And then, yeah. So anyway, Yoda wanted to keep, he wanted to keep it positive. He wanted to empower people. He wanted to inspire people. And that's ultimately why I think I'm grateful for that whole situation mm. that happened, because it did make me think internally about who we want to help, yeah. how we want to do it and how it is to be effective. Because yes, we are here because we genuinely want to help other people. There's no doubt about that whatsoever. Okay. Now that said, if we're berating people all the time, we're not really helping them. And I appreciate Ken, what you did seriously. But I would say one of our members who was Robert Ebert's uh, producer, remember? And he wrote a really long email and he was like, you remind me a lot of Ebert because he was very specific, very technical, and also a little bit ruthless. He's like, but the difference between you two is that he would say things in a way that wouldn't offend people. And he would say things in a way that wouldn't berate people yeah. and wasn't criticizing, but rather saying, uh, you know, what about asking questions kind of, and then that made me think about something. So I'm going to be done after this, but it made me think about something yesterday, which is I was, uh, Sarah and I were talking to someone and they were essentially trying to prove that they weren't an asshole. And I just, I simply looked at the person and I said, I said, how do you expect us to believe that, man? If you were not an asshole and you really wanted a solution to this problem, how come you weren't asking questions? And because you were not asking questions and you went right to the assumption, you are indeed the asshole. <laughs> 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 and on that bombshell, that's going to do There's it for that us <laughs> uh, But right. in all honesty, everyone, we do want to help you. And if we are a little harsh, give us some grace because that's another lesson that I've learned is I've got to give myself and those around me grace to fail and an opportunity to, um, to get better. Indeed. Agreed. And for that, Rob, I thank you. Well, and, and I thank you and I thank you um, for listening. And uh, that was a fun one. It was a fun one. It was it was a long one. Yeah. I have no idea where we're at, but uh, me either. For those of you that have stuck with us Thank to the you. end of this, hmm. Thank I think you. we should do something. <laughs> but yeah. we're just going to say thank you, and we're going to um, and ask you to look forward to the next show, and we hope to to see you there as well. Thank you very much, everyone. If you did enjoy the show or find it useful, don't be afraid to give us a like, smash that subscribe button, or share the show even on another site, because that backlink helps us. So thank you. Or leave a review on iTunes or Spotify. Our iTunes reviews are doing really awesome. So thank you very much. If you want to leave one on Spotify, though, I wouldn't be mad about it. Just saying. <laughs> anyway, thank you for everyone who has supported us through the thick and through the thin, because uh, you are the, the real awesome people. Anyway, I've got a lot to learn, everyone, and so does Rob. And for that, we thank you. <laughs> <laughs>